a good one, huh? Yeah, that was a great one. <laughs> well, welcome to the Snow West Show. I'm Ryan Harris. This is uh, this episode we we've got lined up pretty good. A uh, lot of cool stuff to talk about. We are going to compare the 2023 Ski Do Expert NA. 154 three inch to the 2023 Polaris 9R Chaos 155 2.75 track, and then uh, so head 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 to head comparison, and we're going to do the same with the 2023 Summit Expert Turbo 165 three inch and the 2023 Polaris Chaos Boost Patriot Boost 165 275 track. Um, so we're going to get into that. This is, this is a lot of a. Uh, Sled test review stuff, uh, a lot of head-to-head comparison stuff, uh, little nuances, handlebars, grips, uh, riding position, steering. We're going to talk about lay-down versus vertical steering, kind of going back to what we were just talking about, you know, lay-down stuff. and uh, A lot of, a lot of uh, good stuff to go over in this show. Um, before we jump into it, I do want to say uh, jump on over to snowwest.com, do us a uh, do us a solid here and subscribe to the magazine. Um, you know, it takes a lot to keep this stuff going. We do we do a lot of different content uh, within the industry, mountain riding specific type stuff. We do social media. We do magazines, digital and print. We do uh, videos. Uh, the podcast here, which is something new. But uh, go to snowwest.com and subscribe to the magazine. Uh, if you subscribe within the next couple of days, you'll be able to get the 2023 March issue, which is going to have all the information on the 2024 mountain sleds. A uh, lot of good in-depth analysis, uh, specs, changes, updates, colors, all the new cool stuff. Uh, subscribe at snowwest.com. Since you're listening to the podcast, uh, you, you either found us on YouTube or you found us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts. Hit that subscribe button, follow the show, and make sure you don't miss an episode. And at snowwest.com as well, check out our merchandise. We do have some cool new stuff coming. We've got new hoodies. Uh, all new designs, new hoodies, shirts, hats, a lot of new, a lot of new stuff coming out. So, on to the show. Today we have, uh, this is the full Snow West, this is the full Snow West Test Rider staff. We have... Uh, this might be the first time, too. This, is it the first time we've had everybody? <laughs> I don't think we've ever had everybody here. Man, this, yeah, <laughs> we're knocking it out left and right. We got uh, Justin Stevens over here. Uh, Justin hails from... Uh, well, his past in the industry <laughs> got a little carried away there. Uh, the former marketing manager for Motorfist. Yep. You, how many years did you work at Motorfist? Five. Five years, stint, man. And you guys did awesome things there. Like you had some creative. I hope, I hope so. Creative stuff there. <laughs> good, good product. Like uh, when you started at Motorfist, it was still almost like the black and red piping days. Yeah, we so we started. That's when. I, th- I think right after I came on, they were already kind of looking into some new new colors. Um, takes time to develop. You got to get enough volume that you can start branching out with, yeah. with uh, some of the offerings and stuff. So yeah, the, it's fun. The, the Stomper boot that was a cool boot, and that wasn't even like what it was supposed to be, but it was still a cool boot. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. People loved it. Yeah, and then we have uh, Mr. Articat over here, Bruce Curbs, uh, Polaris certified tech. Right. Yep. Uh, a long time ago. Yeah. You've, you've worked dealerships, uh, wrenching, setup, uh, and you, uh, you're you kind of an Articat guy, right? Yeah, a little bit. What what makes you an Articat guy? Um, I don't know. I think the reliability of them in the past few years. It's always fun to load up and know you can go the next day, but I don't know. I'm, what I'm did, kind of brand What like happened them. to your last ride? I heard, I heard you rode the last ride you tried to go on on your cat you didn't ride well you know i was with a skidoo and a Polaris, and they didn't want to outdo them so i faked breakdown and just come home <laughs> no my, my side didn't run <laughs> you know why so, yes the reliability is just went out the door well yeah we gotta make no. your words on that one wait yeah. you're a polaris certified tech was yeah oh, I am was. still and you ride an arctic cap yeah is that I got tired that, of working on the plane. Is that why? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one, once you're a certified mechanic, you, that never goes away, right? right? You can hang that on your wall for the rest of your life. That's right. Yep. Well, that's pretty I cool. think that's why I ride with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once, <laughs> once a year. I thought Brock was the Arctic guy. guy. That's you. I don't know. Well, Which one is it? He I, said I'm recovering Arctic cat oh, right yeah. now. I, <laughs> I got Brock yeah. into the Arctic cat a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think Brock's converting. I don't know. Like, I don't know now. He's like, a wanderer. I'm, he's a wanderer. I've been spending time on the on nine R and and the players boost, and those have been fun too. I he's, don't know. He's kind of like the Snow West pimp. 
can't be silent. <laughs> right. They like, right. You know? No, for real. He's not yeah. gender specific. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's not yeah. gender specific. <laughs> Brand specific. <laughs> That's brand, what I meant. Brand, 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 brand specific. Brand. Wrong word. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, so you were you weren't here for the last one we just shot. We this time next week we'll have our catalyst mm-hmm. for the rest of the spring. But he already booked it until May. Yeah, that don't surprise me. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I know where he lives. Sorry. So, <laughs> I, I think he's building a new house just so you can't find him. <laughs> <laughs> just so we can keep the catalyst. Yeah, yeah. And then we have Rhett Clark. Rhett's been around with Snow West for years and years. Um, I would make another joke about him being the guy at Heydays that introduces me to people, but we've we've hit that one pretty hard. <laughs> Everybody knows Rhett Clark. Uh, Friends with everybody. We we went riding uh, dirt bikes with a couple guys from Climb. We went to Ledore, Idaho, which is in the middle of nowhere, like two and a half hours from here. There's one gas station slash grocery store slash convenience store. Slash, slash post bar. office. Post office, <laughs> hotel lobby, like every place. We, we finish our ride and we stop at this gas station and we walk in and the lady's like, hey, Rhett. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's, that's a little out of your area for delivery FedEx, isn't it? It's a ways out. Uh, and I'm not kidding. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, Brock Jenna. Uh, Brock over here, he, he's family, technically. We're family. Um, Brock is uh, is another former Arctic Cat guy. He's uh, Ar- formerly Arctic Cat DSM for some of the western states. And before that, he worked at Motor Fist. Worked alongside Justin Stevens over here back in the, you know, the R&D heydays and uh, a lot of cool product at, at Motor Fist, and you went out and slung it to dealerships and got them signed up. And look at you now. It took you on to Arctic Cat, Textron. That's right. And now, now look at me. Don't yep. for self any of them now. <laughs> self employed. Now you're self employed. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. I thought we voted Brock out. When we were up the other day, there was just four of us. We were having a good time. I, I think we realized that maybe we didn't need the fifth. Or... Oh, yeah. I forgot to text oh. you, Brock. <laughs> hey, Brock, can you wait outside? We'll grab you if we need you. I'm out. I'm out. I remember that. You said it would be easier with just four of us. Yeah. Get yeah it, was, it was convenient. Everything worked out great. Yeah, we don't have five-place trailers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you don't have to pull on my skis. I mean, I, I get it. I get it. I'm I'm going right along with it. <laughs> well, you're the first alternate. Just just keep that in mind. <laughs> May, well, maybe second alternate. <laughs> Till the next ride. I think there's some jealousy going on here because I've put more seat time in this year than these guys. <laughs> well, you notice you I didn't get I'm, invited to the last yeah, ride. I think I'm getting <laughs> for the ride before that. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, we I think we've pretty much lined up everything to ride without you, and then we talk about it in front of you. <laughs> Jokes on you. Jokes uh, on me. <laughs> no, but you uh, you have spent a lot of time, especially on these four sleds that we're going to talk about. So we, you know, at Snow West, we've, uh, we used to do what was called the Deep Powder Challenge, and we would take all of the current model year mountain sleds. And back when we started this, there were only two of each. There was a 600 and a 700. Oh. And we would have, uh, we would invite dealerships. In fact, when it started, we would invite two dealerships from each brand. So we had eight <laughs> dealerships that would come up to Island Park. Each of them would bring two sleds with 16 snowmobiles uh, to test. And it kind of it kind of revolved around a head-to-head comparison of all these different mountain sleds, but also at their best with dealer setups. And that kind of evolved, you know, as we had different engine packages and track lengths and lug heights and all this. And, and now we have several, what does what Skidoo have? Five models within the mountain lineup. And each yeah. model has different track lengths and engine options. Polaris is kind of the same way, you know, you, you, you can have 25 different configurations, yeah. track lengths, motors, whatever. Arctic Cat has two. Uh, Yamaha <laughs> has a couple, and no, I, I'm kidding. I love, I love my boys in green. Um, but it, it, so we've had to evolve a little bit over the years, too, because we, we, uh, we don't have access to 16 snowmobiles. We, we are given test units uh, by most of the manufacturers. And that's what we kind of, we, we like to line those up and get them in the same track length configurations, lug heights, uh, whenever possible. Like, um, obviously what we're testing here are different lug heights, but there's a reason for that. And we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, but it, but it's evolved. And where we're at right now in 2023 is we basically took the two factory turbos, 
and we went and compared them. We've been riding them kind of head-to-head all season. And we took the two, what I consider the two premium models within the mountain lineup that are naturally aspirated and compared those. Now, Arctic Cat doesn't provide media test units long-term, so we didn't do an Arctic Cat. We, we do have, you know, full disclosure, we do have a 2023 Yamaha Mountain Max 154 3-inch. It's the, the SL <coughs> version, super light. So, nice. uh, However, it lost an injector, and uh, the, the wonderful dealership that's helping us out with that um, hasn't been able to get <laughs> anything lined up and get that thing running again. So that one was out, um, unfortunately. And we we also do not have a Lynx in this. This we when we did all of our weights though, we weighed everything. We weighed a Lynx. We weighed we yeah. weighed an Arctic Cat. <clears throat> we'll weigh the Yamaha when it's done, but it should be the exact same as that Arctic Cat Mountain Cat Alpha one fifty four that we did. So we we ultimately wound up. We're testing uh, the Polaris Summit Expert Turbo one sixty five versus the RMK Chaos Boost one sixty five. So factory turbo versus factory turbo. We we have the same track length there, but we do have different lug heights. The Expert is only available in a 3-inch, but the Patriot Boost, you could get uh, the 2.75 or the 3-inch. Um, the 3-inch, is it's pretty widely accepted that the 275 is the better track. It's it's the majority of the orders, majority of snow checks went 275. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did too, so that's why, that's why we're running the 275 up against uh, a Skidoo's three inch. And then on the NA side, we have the uh, the 2023 Summit Expert 154, also with a three inch. And we have the 2023 Polaris 9R RMK Chaos 155 275. I probably left about six words out of the title of that <laughs> slide too. I think there's a slash. Slash, I was gonna say there's Matrix. a slash. Yeah. slash. Uh, so yeah, another, another three inch versus 275. And, you know, as we get into, uh, you know, testing these and talking about how these sleds perform in the mountains, there's, there's a lot to consider there with the, with the track uh, differential because you're also 16 wide to 15 wide on both sleds. So you're, I think there is a traction advantage that the Skidoo has. You know, there's more square, square inches of traction of track touching the snow, and then you've got a little bit taller lug height. But... Uh, again, it's it's mainly just comes down to the 275 is is what was the popular Polaris track, and uh, we'll see where they go in the future with that. But uh, the three inch uh, is not quite as popular as their 275. But anyway, so we're we're going to focus today on this on this episode of the podcast, just talking about those four sleds. And uh, I'm going to have to edit that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hit the mute button fast enough. Uh, we're going to have to. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about the Arctic Cat. Obviously, you own a 2023 Mountain Cat Alpha one 154 three inch. Mm-hmm. Um, you've you've ridden cats uh, quite a bit. We'll we'll throw in a little talk about the Catalyst, and we'll talk a little bit about Lynx. We we weighed everything like we said, but uh, this this episode is really just kind of focusing in on what we have and what we've been testing and and writing impressions of that. Um, so first, let's let's go NA. Let's talk about. Uh, Expert versus 9R. So would you guys agree that the 9R is kind of the premier sled in the Polaris lineup without being turbo? Yeah. I I was just sitting here thinking I knew you were going to ask a question like that. I'm like, where would I I put these? And for sure in the naturally aspirated, I I really enjoyed being on the 9R, Uh, especially this last ride. It was was just a lot of fun, very capable, Yeah, very easy to ride. And, And we have an 850 rmk we have an 850 pro rmk we could have thrown in it's 155 right. but if i would have gone you'd have, we'd, have, we'd have taken that one uh you'd have been on the neo <laughs> <laughs> you know backup guy first alternate right right um sweep team yeah <laughs> but but the 9r i we could compare the players 850 but but we know some of the numbers that that they've shared with us everybody got nine r's yeah you know, that, that was just the bulk of the order. 9R or boost. Not a lot not, not a lot of 850 spring check. And as sad as it is, like, after you've been on the 9R for a little while, it's actually really hard to go back to the 850. I don't I yeah. don't know. I, I just want the 9R. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's what it comes down to is, like, if you can have that sled, why would you want the 850? Granted, it's a big price difference. Yeah. You know, you're talking. What, three grand? 
Oh, I was going to say three to four, yeah. I think it's three to four grand. Three to four grand. Because that the, the 9R that we've been riding, the 155, 275, yeah. is 22,800 MSRP. And I, your 850 is closer to... 18? 18. 18. 17. It's got to be less than that. Even. 17. So yeah, you're four grand. More like four to five. Hmm. So yeah, and that, that was surprising. You know, the 9R came in a lot more expensive than we were anticipating. I When we yeah. rode them this time, well, January of 2022, when we started riding the 9R and, and working with the engineering department at Polaris and asking them, like, where are you going to price this thing? And they were like, well, we think it needs to be between the 850 and the Boost, probably a little closer to the Boost. But then it turns out it's... You're thinking 18, 19,000, somewhere in that yeah. range. Yeah. But it turned out they priced it just barely under the Boost, you know. Mm-hmm. 20, 22, eight versus 23, one, 20, 21. Yeah. yeah. So they, they pulled a lot of money out of those things for sure. Um, so let's, let's jump into, uh, we started out kind of our, our latest test session with these things, riding every, everybody that rides, I would say everybody that rides has a section of really rough trail, whether it's half a mile long or five miles long. I know, I know places where they've got to do about 12 to 15 miles of access yeah. on just nasty rough crap. So that is part of your riding if you're a mountain rider. Yeah, for sure. Um, what did you think, expert versus 9R, on, on bumpy, single-track, non-groomed go- goat trail? I don't know. The trail we rode up <laughs> sucked. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. You know, it's funny. We were talking before about trail riding or, or that that necessary trail to get to where you want to go. Um, it's interesting. I they both react very different to me. Like, like I I feel like sometimes the Polaris is a little more capable. I feel like sometimes the Skidoo kind of moves around a little bit more through those bumps. It's a little harder to to carry a straight line. But but e- even though it has a hard time carrying a straight line, I think the Skidoo actually is a little more comfortable to hit the bumps as you go through those. So I don't know. They, they just kind of react differently. The, the players definitely trails better through them, but feels more rigid as you ride through them. So do you, do you feel a lot of a rear end kick on the players? Like there's a lot of rebound yeah. on that rear track. Yeah, track. for sure. More so than this could do. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you get out of rhythm and you kind of just square you know, if you uh, case a, a bump like that picture there, like if you <laughs> smack one of those on the rear track shock, like it, you're going to get a pretty yeah. good kick, yeah. you know, a pretty good forward you know, yep. bump out of that. But I agree the the summit, the expert has a, a little more dialed suspension in that, in that feel, but it's a little sketchy, you know, cause it's, it's narrower. So the experts narrower 34 inch ski stands versus the nine R's 36. Yeah. Um, so it, if you lose your drive or if you kind of lose your, your tracking, you can get out of shape real quick. Yeah. Yeah. He had a square edge. It seems to want to jump left or right. So, yeah. What did what did you find? <clears throat> I agree. the The summit absorbs the bumps. I felt better, you know, than the than the Polaris. The Polaris did feel really stiff in the back. The front front were comparable. I I feel like, but yeah, that um, the Polaris was definitely yeah more rigid. It's a good word through the bumps. So I would prefer the Skidoo. In fact, I tried switching you coming back out. Wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't remember. <clears throat> but no, I I think the the summit. Definitely absorbs better. Um, I didn't notice the squirrely, but I maybe wasn't going as fast as you either. So. But right, yeah. that's what it was. Just as little yeah. squirrely. Maybe I was going too slow. Yeah. <laughs> so but do you do you have to do do you have to change your riding position, Skidoo to Polaris on bumps like that? Do you feel that? Um, maybe a little bit. Um, I feel like you gotta hold on a little more on the, you know the the Polaris, uh, just because it is. It just it's rougher, I guess. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Through them big whoops. Um I feel like yeah, you're probably right on the squirreliness. It does the if you can get rhythm going with the players, it handles it better. It stays more square to the bump. So you're right. That that does ring a bell now and then this could do it is a little more if you're off camber a little bit, it definitely wants to dart. So but and rider I, position. I don't I know if that's really it. I don't know if that has anything to do with the actual weight of the snowmobile or just the you know, ski stance, but I don't know if it's just how the skis actually trail, the, just how they're built, how they trail through. I don't know exactly what it is, but but that's what I think that's we're talking about the same thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, Rhett, did you fa- so uh, 
expert 850 NA to 9R, do you, what do you feel like power wise? Like we're talking about these rough, these big moguls and being able to time it and double and triple through them. And do you feel more response versus one sled versus the other quicker, quicker revving and everything? Not really. I, I think they're pretty comparable. The 850 Skidoo has a great bottom end. It comes on strong and, and the 9R is, I think it's pretty comparable to it as far as jumping through that stuff. I don't think you have a problem getting on the gas and getting over stuff when you need to. Yeah. As far as like suspension, like you guys are talking about, I think both their suspensions were great. I think the Polaris chassis is a stiffer chassis overall. I think you feel that more through your hands and feet than you do on the Skidoo. I think the suspensions felt good though, overall. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I, I, I feel a little bit, I think the 9R is a little zippier than the NA850 Skidoo. But in some of these situations, the, the Skidoo has a little bit more traction. So where the 9R is is quicker to rev and respawn, the, the Skidoo is hooking up. Mm. And so your your overall feel is about the same. But, you know, we Justin, you and I kind of lined up on those two sleds yeah. a few times and just tried to get. So we're, we're, we're on an incline. We're uphill. We're in semi-fresh snow with some old tracks underneath. Yep. And just trying to see how these two come out of the hole together, right? It felt to me like the 9R had a jump on the 850 yeah. Expert nine times out of ten. Yeah, for sure. I I don't I don't think the Skidoo I don't I don't think the Skidoo came out of the hole quite as fast, and I don't know if it was I don't know if it's power or traction, um, but I don't know what what did you think? Yeah, I I felt the 9R would would just get out of the hole and up on top quicker, uh-huh. and and part of that might just be the lower inertia. I mean, it's definitely a lighter snowmobile. I mean, the 9R is yeah. Uh, wet weight. This is full wet weight, full of gas, oil, all fluids, spare belt. So we we weighed the nine R in at five oh seven, and the Summit Expert was five thirty two. So you're twenty five pound difference. Yeah. Um, but I think some of that is also just the lower inertia of the nine R, all that stuff that they did to make that motor spool quicker. And then obviously the nine the RMK chassis just does a really good job of getting up on top of the snow. Yeah. I don't think it's a huge difference. I don't think there was that big of a difference there were a couple times too where we were pretty where those two sleds came out pretty evenly matched yeah 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 if you were ahead what was it my ski to your side panel yeah pretty much (laughs) (laughs) ryan also took off with a lean to the left so he'd take you out at the same time so (laughs) there's there's a little bit of razor mentality in there you know yeah you gotta take the line away (laughs) yeah totally uh brock what do you 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 weren't on the ride where we had the two, you know, last week where we had these two at the same time, but you've had both of them out quite a bit on their own. What do you what's your initial impression nine R versus eight fifty expert? On the bumps. Is that what we're talking about? Well, just overall, yeah. Bumps too, but uh I would I'm gonna have to agree with you just from you know, just from memory from riding both of them quite a bit, that that uh that nine R it it, it spools up fast, you know, whether it's that lighter crank, you know, maybe the track's a little bit lighter. I don't know the weights on the two different tracks. Um, 15 inch track. It just, it, you know, it just seems like it hooks up a little bit, a little bit better, pops you up a little quicker. Um, but when, uh, you know, when you're on the skidoo, the, the dang thing is they, they get up on the, on the snow and they float. They just feel, I don't know, they feel like you get that 16 inch track up on the snow and you just, you're, you're there. You don't, you don't sink. You, uh, you left the throw a little bit, and I don't. I don't feel like I like I sink at all on that uh, on that skidoo. So uh, that that's interesting too, because you know we, we talk about how much lighter the nine R is than the expert twenty five pounds, right? Which is a lot, and also isn't a lot. But when you get into the mountains and you're in, you're, you know, you're off the bumpy trail and everything, does it feel like there's that big of a weight difference to you? When I'm when I'm riding in the trees, uh, no. I don't. I don't feel the weight difference. Uh, it seems like that. It seems like that skidoo stays up. Stays up on the snow every bit as good as the, as the nine R. What do you think, Brute? Um, I feel the nine or the summit um, initiates a turn easier. Um, when I jumped on that nine R up there, it took me a little bit. I don't know if it was muscle memory or what, but to, but to get on it. But uh, I remember one of the last hills up through the trees. I really like that 9R, and I think you made the comment, you got to ride it a little more aggressive. And so I feel like initiating a turn into the trees, it's just a different 
spot in the throttle you've got to be in on that 9R to initiate the turn where the skidoo, I feel like, will kind of wherever you look, it'll go. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think it's what Red, Red's talking about. The 9R, that chassis is more rigid, so it doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't give. It doesn't yeah. flex very much, so you've got to put a little more throw into it to get it yeah. on its edge. And I think a little more throttle, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you, <clears throat> if you can time that throttle just right on that lower power band, I mean, it's just as good as that summit. I feel like going through the trees, but I feel like the summit was easier to initiate first. Does that just, make just sense? Just to get it on site. Well, yeah, and you're, and, and it probably should be because narrower ski narrower. stands yeah. kind of overcomes yeah. yep. that. Yep. What, do, what do you think, Brett? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> um, overall, between the two, I don't know. They're, I think they're really comparable. Weight, talking about weight. Like the summit doesn't feel any heavier than the 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 nine R does when you're riding them. If anything, I think sometimes the summit feels lighter, has a lighter steer to it, easier to tip. So it gives the gives the rider the feel that it's a little bit lighter than the nine R, even though they're the other way around. Um, Power is pretty comparable. They they both have a great bottom end. Both work good. They're both super fun to ride. Um, I had a blast on that nine R this last week when we rode um i don't know it's kind of getting to where you're you know whatever your personal preference is you know one you like the handlebars or seat on or one you like you know whatever it is and kind of whatever you've been riding for a while you get used to it and it's fun and then you jump on the other one and it's fun too so it's they're both great sleds yeah it's fair to say that that a, a polaris rider will hate his buddy's skidoo if he jumps on it for five minutes in a meadow. Oh, yeah. And a skidoo guy will hate his buddy's Polaris if he jumps on it for five minutes. You know, you've you've got to ride long enough to where your riding style and your body and your stance and everything adapt to that snowmobile before you can say, yeah, oh, this thing's a pile of crap. You know, so you, you've got to spend enough time on it to go back and forth. But, but the biggest difference between the two is probably the steering system, right? Lay down yeah. versus vertical. Where... where Justin, where do you feel that? Like, like which which steering style do you like, and where do you feel the differences? Well, it's funny <clears throat> when you're talking about spending a little time on the sleds. I actually spent most most of the first half on the Summit uh, Expert and the Summit Expert Turbo, and and uh, it's kind of funny because I I really haven't spent that much time on the Skidoo, and um, they both they're both really fun to ride. I, I really like that Expert setup and and uh, trailing through the trees. They just seem to go where I wanted to go. And uh, it was kind of fun to spend enough time on it that I actually started to feel pretty comfortable because I probably would prefer kind of that Polaris setup just because that's, that's what I've been riding and what I'm more used to. And so, but it was funny, after a couple hours of riding the Skidoos, uh, I switched over and grabbed, I think it was the 9R. And, uh, and that was one of the very first things that I noticed was the steering. And I, I don't know that I even really paid attention to it before when I was riding the skidoos until I switched back over after a little bit of time on the 9R. So, um, and, and I, that was maybe the first time when I, I thought, you know, actually that skidoo steering is a little more comfortable, comfortable in my shoulders and some of the input that I have to put into it. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that, but it just, I, I did like the, the feel of that skidoo steering both both in maneuvering downhill initiating turns and stuff i um i felt like it required a little less input and a little a little less actual like feedback into my arms and shoulders and so uh, so what what are you feeling when you go from the skidoo back to the polaris and you're now you're, you're turning by you're, you're bringing the grip over to your hip rather than pushing it down you yeah kind of kind of down and lifting at the same time on the skidoo where the Polaris you're kind of yeah and that's that's exactly that's exactly what I felt I mean I it was just kind of like I said I hadn't done that for very very many times and so it was the first time that I felt like I got back on the Polaris and I was I was kind of up and higher and and um I don't know we the first thing we did was drop down kind of a drainage and then turned up and out of there and it was just kind of I just felt probably just more more pushback on on that steering in a different way. And I, I think the skidoo is really comfortable. I think that lay down was actually quite comfortable. Was there ever a point on the mountain where the lay down was a hindrance? Um, I, maybe for me, just, I'm not used to that, maybe that action. So as I'm, as we were doing some of those 
low speed, you know, downhill, turn back uphill, I, I'd sometimes get kind of off off balance because it moves differently. Where this the Polaris, I usually am a little bit more up and over the handlebars. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's the only area that it really affected me the most. So. Yeah, I think the lay down steering on this Skidoo tends to push your body back farther on the sled. Yeah. And, and you, you wind up just looking down and being like, yeah, I'm farther back on this than normal. And the Polaris, in the real technical stuff, allows you to be right up next to the steering post for the most yeah. part. Um, every now and then you, you've got to move around a little bit more. but Which is actually funny because you almost want to be farther forward on the Skidoo and farther back on the Polaris. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> so they're actually, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Brock, which which of the two sleds can you stay in the neutral position more? Meaning both feet, one one foot on each side of the sled just straddling the seat. Which which is easier to ride like that? Uh, I would say the Polaris. Once I get that Polaris on its, you know, on its edge, I can stay over the seat. It seems like more comfortably as it gets steeper and steeper on that Polaris than I can on the Skidoo. And what do you feel in the, in the steering? Like, do you, do you prefer the vertical steering? I mean, I know you're coming from cat, so that's more familiar to what you're used to. It's more, it's more natural to, for me, the vertical steering and more, like I said, more familiar because of the cat. Um, but I don't, now that I've been on the Skidoos, I don't dislike their steering. Their steering is, it's, it's comfortable. So, um, I don't know one one thing. Did you guys did you guys when you're when you're doing a hard turn to the right? Did you guys ever catch your tether on the Polaris? On the, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's on, funny. On the, on the Skidoo. <clears throat> no, on I skipped the, the Polaris. <laughs> I, I, I did several times on a hard turn to the right. Yeah. You know, if I was going to cut up a hill, cut it, I'll crank it all the way, boom, spin around, and I I've and caught my tether, tether several over. times for some reason <laughs> doing that. I, I catch the Skidoo <laughs> tether on a right hand turn. I catch the Polaris tether on the left hand turn. Maybe it was left. I don't know. <laughs> what, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't no, know. What it's is. just funny because we stopped in the middle of the mountain, and I'm like, I'm like, I keep, I keep catching the tether, up. and he's like, so did I, but that was on the Polaris. So I don't remember. I was thinking of okay. right hand turn. It just seemed like it only happens to me on the Skidoo. It's weird. Which would make you think sense that's because it's coming back down. in. Yeah, you're you're tucking it in your hip, and I, I don't know. Like on the on the suit I was wearing, the the tether hook is off to my left side a little bit. So when I when I do turn left on the Polaris, it's kind of closer to catching the grip on that side. Yeah. But on a pl on a skidoo, if I turn right, yeah. I'm catching that thing okay. either on the throttle lever or just all the way around the bar. I just uh, I want to make sure I wasn't the only one doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. that, I don't know I don't, I don't know if I answered your question, but I you sure answered mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, on, I, <laughs> on the steering though, I feel um, on the skidoo, if you counter steer too much, it hurts you more than it helps you. I feel like I don't have to counter steer as much on the skidoo versus the players hmm. in a real sharp turn. And I don't know if that's just the positioning of your arms and hands on a counter steer versus, you know what I mean, on mm -hmm. the skidoo versus the players. But I felt like if I over counter steered, it hurt me more than it helped me. I think that goes back to what you asked him about neutral riding position. Like I feel the same way. Like I feel like you can ride more neutral on a skidoo and keep both feet, you know, on the Maybe, boards yeah. without stepping one side or the other hmm. so when when if you're out with other guys and you say you're out with a group of polaris riders and you're on a skidoo and you you have one of them jump on the skidoo for a minute wh what's the first thing that they do they hate the steering well they go dump it on the Get side over mm -hmm. yeah right yeah. They, they override it so that that tells you that that a polaris chassis requires a little little more effort on most every maneuver but because it's so rigid it holds that edge really well mm-hmm um, but yeah, I agree. With, I agree with what you're saying on the skidoo. I can stay in a, in a neutral position more of the ride than I can on a Polaris. Yeah, that's funny. I, I, I think there are a couple instances even on the skidoo or on the skidoo where I'm trying to <clears throat> step over wrong foot forward trying to, and I realize that I, I don't actually need to do that, but it's kind of a f form of habit in that circumstance on the Polaris. Mm -hmm. so, and, and maybe it doesn't require that quite as often. So, yeah. No, interesting. Going back to the steering thing, I I feel on the skidoo that uh, the the lay down steering when I when I'm on a side hill and I'm going through trees, that lay down steering pulls my upper body down lower and it pulls my center of mass lower to the sled than the Polaris does, and it f kind of forces me into that that low position. Um, the Polaris, I, I find myself 
um, a little too upright sometimes, and that gets me into trouble. Like I need to, you know, the, the Polaris, the low bar on the Polaris is is the is my preferred setup. Even though I'm six four, I'd rather have the lowest bar possible because I want it to to keep me low and keep the the roll center close to the sled. Um, but but I do find myself on the Polaris standing up too much and then having to again put more effort into cutting it back into where I go. Huh. But when I get comfortable on the Polaris, man, you can leave me on that thing all year. Like like both sleds are very capable. You can do about anything you want, but it it really does just come down to what's your preference, you know, and and what do you ride, you know, what what are you used to? Yeah. Uh, let, let's throw the turbos in. So we're, we're talking like the, the ride we did last week with these four sleds. We, uh, it was the same place that you went with us with Skidoo, exact same place. We cut across those, those two open hillsides. And then we dropped into that one big steep hole, you know, where we, where we took Tristan and <laughs> took him, took him a while to get down. <laughs> Poor like, kid. Like super steep descent <laughs> down into this hole that nobody goes in because it's, it's, one of the biggest oh, there's no tracks drainages there. up there. Yeah. No, nobody rides that part of the mountain. Um, so the turbos in there, the factory turbos were just like phenomenal in there. But what, like Rhett, what do you, what do you feel Patriot boost versus turbo are just power wise? Power wise. I think they're pretty comparable. I think last year the Patriot had more top end and I've always felt like the, the summits more rideable power. Like in and out of the throttle, seems like it stays more in the power where you need it, more rideable for tree riding. Um, then they turned up the the 850R, and it, it's I think they're neck and neck as far as power wise goes. I think that Skidoo just point either one of them uphill. Skidoo feels a little more playful, stands up a little bit more. Um, the players we had seemed like it stayed on its skis a little bit more, more planted feel. But both of them power wise are just unreal. Those turbos are amazing. So uh what do you feel, Bruce? Like like power delivery, usability, like power band? Um Plurs <clears throat> Plurs has definitely improved since uh, last spring, you know, and we had that one and I always thought it was maybe clutching or something, but um the bottom end on the Plurs has definitely improved, which helps in the trees. I personally feel like Skidoo still has the edge as far as um your bottom end power in the trees. Um it feels more like a stock sled with more power versus actually feeling that turbo kick in on the Polaris. But <clears throat> like I say, improved a lot. I, I agree with you that Skidoo or the Polaris keeps the skis more on the ground, which to me makes it feel a little heavier, even though it's lighter on that turbo for some reason. And I don't know if that's just the, the power getting to the track better on the Skidoo. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I, I think some of that, I think some of what you're feeling, okay, so the, the Patriot boost that we're on is a chaos, mm -hmm. which is supposed to lift the front end more than a pro. If you if you wrote a, a 165 Pro RMK, you really can't get the front end to come off the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's really planted. Um, and then the other thing you might be feeling is the, the positioning of the turbo system. You know, on the on the Skidoo, the turbo is fairly central. It's, it's, it's off of center to the mag side just a little bit. Where the Polaris turbo is mounted, basically where the muffler is, like it's quite a ways off of center to the mag side. Gotcha. And so you're you feel that weight because it's farther off of the vehicle center line. Um, so you, you know the, each vehicle, e each of these two sleds are 20 pounds heavier than their NA similar mm -hmm. models. Mm -hmm. But I think you feel the weight on the hanging out the right side of the Polaris more than you feel the weight of, that makes the, sense. of the Skidoo turbo. Yeah. Uh, Justin, what do you think on the on the power delivery? Yeah, um, I I like the Summit Expert Turbo the most, and I I have to admit, I mean, they did improve from last year, but I I really wasn't that impressed, and it was toward the end of the ride that I spent some more time on the boost, so maybe I was tired, but I I just felt like uh, I just felt like it was a lot of sled, heavy extra weight, and then just not a lot of usability for the power. Um, that skidoo they've done such a great job of making that power delivery to where i felt like i was riding a turbo sled in the trees where the polaris i kind of felt like i was riding a, a stock 850 that was 30 pounds heavier so i i personally just just between those two uh, this last week i mean that i i actually really enjoyed the turbo the some some the expert turbo 
it was a lot of fun. So I think the power delivery is quicker on that bottom end. So. And so what does that do? If it's, if it's more of a mid to low end power than the boost, where does that come in handy? How does it help you? Um, well, I mean, you, you know, you use, you use the throttle to maneuver. So I, I guess I just, I felt like I, I had that. I could move a little quicker through the trees. Um, I, I've, I felt like the, the power coming on was a little bit more reliable. I knew that it was going to engage quick. I, would, I think sometimes with the boost, I know I know it's coming. I just don't know exactly when, and and not sure how to control that. Maybe a little bit in the trees, and and maybe I'm not carrying enough speed. Maybe if I was carrying more speed and really in into that that you know chaos boost, I'd I'd uh, felt like that maybe that experience would have been a little different. But um, I don't know with where we were riding and and stuff. I just I just felt like whenever I wanted or needed that that summit power i i could rely on it engaging quickly on the bottom end so so i guess i guess in the trees i mean i just know i can turn uphill and hammer down and be more confident in where i'm headed so yeah and i i feel i feel on the on the patriot boost uh, when i ride it i've got to carry a little higher rpm um which coincidentally to do that i drag the brake a lot <laughs> which is going to be an issue going forward like like you have uh so they had that stop ride that for the brake issue and their their fix for that uh, is in the ECU. So if you have if you have like four seconds of interlock brake and throttle applied at the same time without a reset of either, you get a valve down where your exhaust valves close and start to hinder your performance just to to make you slow down. And then uh, you have to shut the sled off to reset it, fire it back up. And then you've got ten seconds of interlock if you don't shut the sled off before it'll shut itself off. So I don't understand the logic there as a mountain rider, like, right. like limiting my ability to run the brake at the same time as the throttle. I, I think that's kind of important, but, uh, because it is, it is a tool that I use on the boost. Like I'll drag the brake to keep the R's high, but to keep the vehicle speed low through certain situations, um, on the Patriot boost. But, uh, well, but I, uh, and not some situations are do or die. I mean, I, we were, when we were riding up the other day, we were headed up and it wasn't, it wasn't that extreme, but, I mean, we're riding up the hill, and all of a sudden, I'm just like, whoa, like, nose down, no power. And I'm thinking, my very first thought was, I'm sure glad I'm not somewhere where I don't have a way out. Because I was done. I didn't have any more power. I couldn't go up the hill anymore. And so I don't know that, I'd almost argue that it's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it It's weird. Like, I, 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 again, I don't understand the logic, because yeah. you because there are... There's instances in the real world riding that you you can't say okay these two solutions to prevent brake heat solve everything. Yeah. No, like like you need more time. Yeah. I, I think anyway, but 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 I do agree with what you're saying. I I think the Turbo R Skidoo setup is more of a mid to low power delivery. Still has yeah. really good top end. Right. But mountain riding the way we ride and the way we rode last week, we're we're slower ground speed. Like we're moving. The snowmobile is moving slower, so we're in a lower RPM range. So the Skidoo Turbo seems to be a little more usable. Yeah, it comes in handy more, and you can do more with it. Yeah. Where if you're carrying speed on the Polaris, and the trees are more open, and you have bigger line choices and more sure. more room to move, then you're you're moving faster to be in the same position on the Skidoo to where that right. power is is instantly usable. Right. And I would say, I mean, that is true. Like we, we kind of broke into that little bit more open areas where you're carrying a lot more, you know, speed through the trees and really on the turbo yeah. through there. And that was a lot of fun because, I mean, you, you start carrying a lot of speed quick. So so maybe just different riding circumstances and different areas. What did what did you find, Brock? You've had you've had both out. Right. Yeah, I've been out on both of them. Uh, I I've, did you say something? Huh? What? A lot. <laughs> oh, a lot. A, a little bit. A I've lot. Done, I've done them a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, I start thinking about, you know, what you guys are saying about the lower uh, lower engagement, lower RPM uh, speed of the of the Turbo R. And it, it just makes me think that's, that's kind of how we initiate our turns because we're turning so many times in these trees. We initiate our turns with that, with our tracks, with the track speed, with throttle control. So I think that's why, I think that's why a lot of us are leaning towards that Turbo R. Uh, because I think it gives us less fatigue because we're using less of our bodies to, to do all these turns that we're doing in the trees with that lower bottom end of, of, of that triple R. 
And so that's, I think that's why I, that's why I lean towards, you know, wanting to ride the turbo R over the boost because that's where we live is in the trees and doing lots of turns. So there's my, there's my two cents. What do you, did, so Rhett, between those two, between Patriot boost and turbo R, regardless of kind of the configuration, but you know, specifically here, we're talking expert versus chaos. Like which, which one would you lean toward as your sled? Uh, probably the skidoo. I think it's, well, he was talking about fatigue. I think it's an easier sled to ride. I think um, it doesn't wear you out so much. And I think a lot of that goes back to what you're talking about with where the turbo is mounted on that sled. They built that sled so everything's centered and and low. And so I think when you're side hill and throttle side or brake side, it doesn't it doesn't feel any different to me. Like you can go either side. I don't think it makes you tired. Or the RMK Chaos Boost, I think it you know, wears you out a little bit more. Just the added weight on one side of the sled, depending on which side you're side hilling on, obviously. So you're so, saying you can fall off the left side just as easy as you can fall off the right side? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but like that, <laughs> that steep hill we dropped off of um, right when we started down it, I kind of stood up for a second to look, you know, to see where you were going. I was following you, and just a little bit more weight on that side of the sled and I, I tip so both skis drop down and then I slid right into a tree and I'd have Bruce come rescue me. So <laughs> but I mean for the the Polaris are amazing in that in those type of conditions, super steep and you know, where you're going downhill, uphill, side hill straight across, they'll hold that line. But if if you're gonna be doing that stuff all day long, I'd rather be on a non turbo on a Polaris versus like on a skidoo, I either one N A or tor- turbo. Like I don't think they wear you out as much. So uh let's go N A versus Turbo. So nine R versus Patriot Boost and then Expert N A versus <coughs> Expert Turbo R. Which which turbo feels heavier than its N A counterpart? Would we all say the Polaris does? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Mm-hmm. For sure. You agree with that? I agree. Um, and then clutching. I, I don't know if it's clutching or if it's just uh, fuel mapping and where, where the power comes on, but the, the the Skidoo definitely does deliver a little more power right off the bottom, right? Yeah. Um, I, I We did some testing. I can't remember if you guys, yeah, which one of you were there. Um, we've done, done a little, this is very rudimentary, but some just out of the hole testing. Maybe it was uh, at the intro with the engineers. Anyway, 850 NA Polaris, 9R NA Polaris, and Patriot Boost Polaris. Those three from a dead stop, the 9R jumps out two or three sled lengths on everything. Then the 850, then the Patriot Boost. And then you get 30 yards, 40 yards down the, the length of whatever you're racing on. And the Patriot Boost closes the gap. The 850 actually closes the gap on the 9R too. Um, but the Patriot boost will close the gap and then just kind of walk away from everything. Interesting. Um, so it, it is kind of, it's just a, it's a matter of power delivery. It's a matter of weight and weight bias and how that's all engineered and balanced. Um, I think in that comparison, that's why the nine are so impressive in the trees. Right. You, know, you want the power right then when you're ready to do something, it's right there. I mean, like you said, put them in a line on a flat ground and the nine R jumps out front. So I, so I think it's, it relates to tree riding. It's more fun, more impressive in that, in those conditions. Yeah. So Bruce, um, same question to you, nine or uh, Patriot boost chaos versus expert turbo R, which one are you taking? Probably the summit. The yeah. Turbo R. What are your main reasons for that? Um, <clears throat> I think it feels lighter, even though it is heavier, but I think it feels lighter and just the type of riding I do. I feel like it's more friendly to ride through the trees, and I feel like there's a little more um, effort put into the the boost to get it to where I want it to go. Um, I know we are going to talk about handlebars, and I'm half wondering if this can we jump into yeah, that? Yeah, jump into handlebars. Yeah. I feel like, and I've I felt like this with the players for years. The handlebars are too wide, and I feel like I don't know if that's harder out here versus even just hand width, you know, in makes it. Um, feel like you have to push or pull a little more on the players. It'd be fun to take a Polaris and put a different set of bars on and just see, because I've always I 
can't say I, hate, but I've never liked the Polaris. I agree with set. you, and, and especially as a cat guy, because the cat bar is quite a bit narrower mm-hmm. overall. But if you take if you take the Polaris and say like what like that hillside we dropped off, if if you lose your edge and that Polaris kind of falls down the hill mm-hmm. to reach the far end of that bar. It's a long ways down there. Is a, is a farther reach. So you're moving your upper body mass farther over the roll center. So you have less leverage to pull it back up on edge. Mm-hmm. Or if you have a narrower bar, even if it's half inch narrower, every yeah. little bit just gives you a little more leverage yeah. to get that thing. I, I agree that <clears throat> the pro taper bar that's been on those sleds since 2011 is, is too wide. Yeah, I'd I like, agree. I'd like to see him try something yeah. narrower. Yep. So anyway, that might be some or a lot of the difference between the two, just that body position or arm width or whatever. You know? Yeah. So, but I would take the, the definitely the turbo R. Would you take the turbo R over a catalyst M600? Hmm, now we're talking. I don't know. I'd just take both. I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Justin, same thing to you. <laughs> turbo versus turbo. Are you, you going Patriot boost or turbo R? Um, <clears throat> I think I'd go the turbo R. Well, same reason as Bruce said, it it actually feels a little lighter, and with that with that added low end response, at least, like I said in the, I know, I am, shocked. I know. Can you believe it, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mr. <shocked>. P- <laughs> Mr. Polaris? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't know. I just uh, like I said, I I really enjoyed riding it early in the day, and then just in those conditions, in those tight trees and stuff, I I really enjoyed that that turbo R. So good sled. Brock, did, did we hit you with that question yet? Yeah, I I think I t- told you I would do the turbo R, the turbo R. Okay, is what so, I would do. I I, I agree. Hey, I, which one did you guys like the sound of the best? Let's get to the importance of the two turbos. Yeah. Oh man, I, I don't know if I thought of it that way. <laughs> that boost just that boost sounds awesome. <laughs> it sounds so good. Maybe you guys that didn't spend enough enough. time on it. <laughs> Brock, sits, Brock sits in his garage with the, on the jack stand. <laughs> no, I, I was riding with a guy on a on a twenty three Summit Expert, and we were doing some pretty fun pulls up through the trees. And he's just like, it just sounded like you were going to eat me because <laughs> I was on the boost. He's like, that it just sounded phenomenal <laughs> when you get when you get that when you get that boost going. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that well, doesn't have anything to do with our topic. What's your good, good point. <laughs> I'm just throwing right. stuff out there. I like it. What's I that? like it. What's your opinion? Uh, I I agree. I If I'm picking between the two factory turbos, I'm going to go with the Skidoo. And, and here's why. Because the power delivery is, is mid to low, and I don't ride fast enough to fully utilize the Patriot Boost power. I know guys that do, but I don't. And then the, the crap that we rode last week, that's where I ride. So the trees are pretty tight. Um, I, I'm not moving fast enough to really get into where the boost is, is fully usable to me. Uh, but the turbo R is a very functional machine and the weight bias, like, like I don't feel like there's much of a weight penalty going from an NA expert to the turbo R expert. Yeah. When you're moving, they feel about the same when you're, when you're going really slow, you can still feel, you know, that the, obviously the NA is lighter and it feels lighter, but when you're, uh, when you're moving, you just forget you're on a turbo weight wise, but you have all the power in the world and it's just, it's just so flipping fun. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to go the same way. I'm, I'm saying turbo R is the better <laughs> fit for, for my riding style and what I do. Uh, let's jump back to the NAs. So, uh, go around and get nine R versus uh, expert NA, which, which one are you taking home? That's that one's, that's a more, that's a tougher one for me. Oh, that, I, but we have one more question I, coming up. I really <laughs> like, I, I really like the, I really like the bottom end of that, of that nine R. That's and it's super playful. What's that chaos? <laughs> I know which one you did take. Come on, clock sticking in the back of your pickup. Oh yeah, we don't have much. We don't have much. We don't have much time left. Uh, yeah, you got to pick. You got to. You got to come down hard on these things. I th- okay, I think on the. I think I had more fun on the 9R. Okay. Like I think I take the 9R. Rhett? I, I think they're both competitive. I think overall I'd probably take the 9R. I really like the bottom end on that. It was just fun sled. Um, talking about handlebars, made a few changes to it and um, probably be more fun, but I'd probably take the 9R if I was picking. Bruce? Justin? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Articat. Mr. Articat. I mean, oh, hey, remind me to ask you about the Articat factory turbo. 
Okay, I'll let you know. Let you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Shots fired. I think I'd take the Mountain Cat Alpha over. I'll just um, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> it's right there. It's on the sheet. No, I. it is a hard decision between um, – because at first I wasn't a fan of the 9R. I liked the power, but as far as the, the chassis and the handlebars and everything. But uh, when I got to ride it the second time, I kind of really liked it. So – that's that's really a tough one. Maybe the nine R just a little bit more, but I I really like that Summit Expert. Like, and I've never been a Skidoo fan until last year. Yeah, when the Gen, Expert come out. Gen fives. Gen fives. Is so a really l- nice chassis. Let me ask you this and kind of throw Cat a bone here. You you have a twenty twenty three Mountain Cat Alpha one fifty four three inch. Mm-hmm. Where would you put that in the mix with the nine R and the? That's hard Expert. because I'm really comfortable on the Alpha. And I've figured out how to ride it and the suspension set up. So that's, I don't know if that's a fair question, but it is because I can do a lot more on the Alpha, but I'm used to it. I really like the track of the Alpha. Um, they do feel a little front heavy, you know, coming down a hill. Um, but I kind of like it on the initial turn because you got all that weight rolling into the hill and then. I don't know. It's hard. I so so you. So what's your question? Wait a minute. You you want <laughs> you want a heavier sled? <laughs> no, I'm just saying it does feel a little. He heavy. uses it to his advantage. But, but advantage. by that but by that logic logic, if we threw another twenty pounds under your hood on the cat, it'd be even better on those. Yeah, cars, right? it would. Oh, no, yeah. it would. So. we're onto something here. <laughs> as long as you're going downhill, as long as you're going this, downhill. this might be the easiest aftermarket product ever <laughs> invented. I've got, I've got yeah, a tra- just a just got, a weight that I got straps a tra- into the. I got front. extra tractor weights. Would you like? Like that, that fit in the under the hood or more in um, the more like the alpha on, skid or yeah, the alpha skid. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a science where <laughs> they put these tractor weights like like forty pounds right here. Uh, but if you that's move what it, it is. The this farmer, way, it just makes all the shine. That's what it is. <laughs> there we go. You gotta have weights on everything. Yeah, you gotta you gotta keep the front end down. <laughs> They're brutal today, aren't they? Bruce? <laughs> I'm taking that's it. Brutal. I'm taking it. Um, I honestly, this is this is kind of cheating, but. Now that I know what's coming out with Cat, if I had to pick between these three, honestly, I'd probably go the Expert, even though I really like that Chaos. But I really like the Skidoo handling. So I'm going to go Expert. Okay. Justin? Uh, I don't think it's hard at all. It's the 9R. Oh. <laughs> In the naturally aspirated, the 9R feels like I'm riding the Summit Expert Turbo in the trees. Good point. It it's impressive. Like it. Valid. I get a lot of like quick engagement, and throttle. I mean, it, I don't think we got anywhere near the power, but um, I don't think it's that far off. But again, like that type of riding, we're not. You know, I don't. I don't ride ninety miles an hour through the trees, so I just need something that I, I like to carry lots of speed as much as I I dare and, and feel comfortable with. But I want to. I want to know. I like predictability. It's one of the reasons I like the the Polaris chassis for a lot of years because I feel like it's it's the one that does what I want the most. And then with that power, um, that that's what I've been thinking this whole time is that if if I had to compare something, that that's what I would, would compare to the turbo. The 9R. In, the, in the Summit, yeah, the 9R in the trees. If you threw different handlebars on the 9R, it might change me. We're not throwing them on, so just got to keep <laughs> the stock, all right, Bruce? That is such an Arctic cat answer. It's it funny because that doesn't yeah. it doesn't bother me at all. I guess I'm used to it. I never really thought about that before. So I, I do like, I mean, the more upright, I kind of feel like I'm more, I, I like to ride a dirt bike, so I feel like <clears throat> riding a dirt bike, I'm up over the handlebars more right until I go over the handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what no, do you what, got, Ray? What you just What you just said is just like, like when, when we're talking new sleds, <laughs> and then the Arctic Cat they guys like, this. dude, if you put a lightweight hood and a can <laughs> on a cat, <laughs> right? they're, they're, right? they'll do anything. This exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now it's now no, it must add weight I, though. I don't think you'd go wrong with either one of them, and I think it all comes down to just press per personal preference. But yeah, and I did enjoy the Summit Expert in the trees. It was a lot of fun. So that's probably the first time I've really I, I've ridden Skidoo for a lot of years, and then I kind of switched over into Arctic Cat, and then went back over into Polaris and. And uh, so I do like the the skidoo, but I um, just I'm just more comfortable on that Polaris. But yeah, yeah. those two sleds are really comparable, but like the nine R something new, like yeah, this feels completely different than what we've had in the past. So, what are you going with, Snow West? There, the, yeah. So they're comparison, <laughs> they're comparable. 
I, I love the I love the expert NA. I think it's a great sled, but I am nine R all day long. That sled, that sled is everything that we have ever asked for. Lightweight, low inertia, snappy, responsive. Give me a race sled feel and a mountain chassis, and throw me in the trees and just leave me alone. That's everything we've ever wanted. There's things that the expert does better and is easier to do, mm-hmm. but. I, I would love an expert that did exactly what the 9R does. Like, take some weight away, make that thing snappier, more responsive. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 9R all day long on that thing. In fact, let me put it this way. If the factory turbo never came around, everybody would be on 9Rs right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that is, that is what <clears throat> mountain guys have, have been stomping and pounding their fists and, and demanding for years. I have a question. Is the, oh, we got we got to go. We got to wrap this up. <laughs> Do you think this turbo fa- turbo thing is a phase, and in three years people will be like, eh, "I don't want turbo." No, 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 no. I, I tur- you think it's here to stay. I think it's here to stay, and I think if anything, we're going to start seeing NA models go away. Really? Because they're selling so many. It, it it's not even close. Like if you had a pie chart. Well, I know, but it's the first year. We're second year. You know what I mean? Third year? Third year. Fourth year? We're not in four <laughs> years yet, are we? 2024 20, is the fourth year. 2020 was the first year. Oh, that's crazy. Crazy. 50, 50. And they've gone like this every year, Ryan? Gone yeah, up. I mean, I just want. I, I, I know, I know you question. ride hard at cats, but do you even pay <laughs> oh <my> attention? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just our last podcast. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't here. I know, but if you would have been here, I mean, when we get done with that, I'm thinking, which sled would I get? It's the free ride <laughs> turbo. 154. After hearing us talk about it, huh? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so yeah, we want to wrap this up. We want to keep it. We're at an hour. But last question. You, We all agree that the Summit Turbo is our pick for that. And I think we're, we're most – I think most everybody was 9R. We, I like to be different. He you was, were the different one? He was different. So, but I would so you, you, if I you had picked a... the cat, and then you picked the, pol- the Skidoo, <laughs> and then you picked the Polaris. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, we'll start over here with you, Brock. <laughs> 9R or expert turbo? I can't wait for two years when cat. 9R or expert turbo? If you could own one sled. Expert turbo 154. Why? Because it's got that bottom end that we've been talking about, but it's also got some top end. That's the sled I'd take. Okay. Rhett? Same sled, either 165 or 154. I, I've rode a lot of 165s lately, so it would be fun to jump back on a little bit shorter one. We've been doing a lot of stuff on them lately, so they're more fun. But I'd take the, the Summit Turbo, the Expert Turbo. That, that's your overall pick? Yeah, I, I love turbos. Like, I'm a little bit bigger guy than these guys, and, like, I just love the power and being able to use it to my advantage any time I can. They're just a riot to ride. Yeah, I mean, you ride it hard all day long, it'll wear you out a little bit more, but they're so fun. Like. Just nonstop smiling the whole time you're riding. So, well, and it's funny because these these turbos are only giving us what what that motor would do at sea level. So you, you take all these trail riders that ride at 500 feet or lower elevation, and yeah. they're riding 850 NAs, and they're having as much fun on that 850 NA as we are talking about this right. 850 turbo. True. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a big difference there to take into consideration. I'd probably go Summit Expert Turbo 154. And then what? <laughs> just, uh, just, just, just seeing, just seeing how, how quickly cat rolled Turbo? off your tongue there. Yeah, <laughs> probably the summit expert. Uh, the NA, else. yeah. Okay, Justin. Ish. <clears throat> um, that one's a little harder. After hearing Rhett talk, you almost want to go with the with the Skidoo. <laughs> but no, I think I'd go with the nine R. Overall, so, yeah. I, I'm really close to where you're at because the the nine R is such an incredible sled. It, it's probably one of my probably one of my top three sleds ever. I, I mean, I've, I've been riding mountain sleds, uh, testing everything since shoot. I would say 1994. So like 1980, you've been on everything. <laughs> well, but, but, but from from a, from a test <laughs> when when you start paying attention, you, you, yeah. start, you start testing everything. But since since the mountain segment was officially created in 1994. I've ridden everything since. So the, the 9R is, is in my top three. 
I don't know what the other two are, but it's in the top three, I right, guarantee it. Right there with the oh, Mount five. Max triple. <laughs> Mount Max <laughs> triple, number one. Oh, that was my favorite. 700. <laughs> oh, five, 900. No. <laughs> Wrong 900. Top, top three. Top three. <laughs> Uh, which is which is ironic because we're talking players nine hundred to nine hundred, um, yeah. but yeah, I, I I'm almost right there with you. One thing that, if I'm a consumer standpoint, like it's one thing to be a test rider and just just nothing nothing about price factors in, but if I'm a consumer, I'm looking like wait a minute, for the same price I can have a turbo on my snowmobile, or not, same price sure. out the door. It's a good um, one to bring up. I. I would say my overall pick is going to be an expert turbo for the same reasons. It's just very rideable. And if I can have a turbo, why not? But um, I, I will say this, like the 9R, the Patriot Boost does not feel like a turbo version of the 9R. It feels like a turbo version of the 850. Right. If, if they could get that Patriot Boost bottom end to feel quick and responsive and feel like that 9R, yeah. I think they'd have something on there. That would be a totally different machine for me. Um, if they could bring the power down, and I, I know you can do that with tuning, but I, but we're, we talk from the factory, bone stock setup. Um, if they can move the, the usable power a little bit down in the RPM range, um, I, I could I could jump on a Patriot Boost and be just as happy as I would on a, on a Turbo R. What length of track would you go? Oh, man. I, I used to be a 165 guy, and I... I would say I'm firmly a 154 guy now, but like I said, if if I do one for like we said in our last episode, yeah, if I could only ride for an hour a day, I'd be on a 146. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'd, I'd probably do a 154. That's not how long you usually ride. It's about an hour. I, well, I know. Like, well, honestly, if you if, Mama if, got, you factor you in home. <laughs> you factor in all the crap you got to do on the way in, the bumpy trail, the photos that we do, right, the pictures, right. the stopping, the actual riding, the waiting. Like the waiting for Brock or the waiting for Bruce <laughs> <laughs> happens. <laughs> you know, the, the looping back down and finding people. Like by the time you actually get to a good zone and ride, yeah, it's about an hour. <laughs> some truth to that. Uh, Go back to funny. the nine R. They have the eight fifty boost. So when are they going to put the boost on the nine hundred and make that sled that you want? I don't know. Like, do you do you think that's something they would do? Racers do it. <laughs> well, but but racers, yeah, they're they're taking a Patriot Boost and they're they're swapping out the jugs, but you're not getting the crank. So the the nine R has the six fifty crank in it, so it's lighter journals and it, it's quite a bit less rotating mass. So even if you do a nine hundred big bore on a Patriot Boost, it's not the same motor. Mm. Um, you ultimately need that that lightweight crank. I don't know if they're going to do that or why they haven't. Um, or if they ever will. I mean, maybe they really don't need to. Like, like when we get into this kind of level of, yeah. of evaluating and testing, like we're splitting hairs. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. absolutely. <laughs> and, and you could take you could take the most base model in season sled out there and go out and just have a riot, have right. a good time. Right. But we get into this level. You know, we're talking twenty three thousand dollars sleds, and and uh, there's Split not cat hairs. Yeah, <laughs> cat hairs, Cat- catalyst hairs, even catalyst hairs. <laughs> yeah, it'd be hard to hard to cry over having to ride any one of these sleds. So yeah, for sure. Um, but but like we said, you know, in, in a week from now, uh, we're gonna get back on. We'll 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 do some more episodes talking sled tests. But we're going to be hitting on 2024s uh, pretty heavily. We're gonna we're gonna break those down and do individual sled reviews, and then we're gonna go uh, lump them in and compare them, uh, put them in groups talk about them we will have a catalyst a week from now that we'll have for the rest of the season uh i believe we'll have a, a 2024 free ride turbo uh that we'll have for the rest of the season so we'll we'll spend a lot of time on some stuff and, and keep talking about it so uh whatever whatever podcast format you're on right now hit that subscribe button follow the show uh it's, you don't want to miss an episode going forward we're gonna we're gonna do a lot of sled talk a lot of uh test reviews a lot of event coverage here on the snow west show podcast and like we said at the beginning of the show, hit snowwest.com, subscribe to the magazine, check out our merchandise. Uh, we do have some cool new stuff about to drop, new hoodies, new shirts, new hats. Uh, be sure to check that out. But thanks for listening, and thank you guys for coming on.